what are the basic components and devices we have with on the boiler. This is the boiler burner. As you will find, the main component of this, we have the what you call the inside, have the pilot burner and the main burner inside. The fuel valve and this fuel valve is connected directly on the pressure. It's connected on the main burner and on the pressure gauge. Gauge and we have also a pilot burner from which directly connected on the fuel pump. This is the first drop pan. This is the ignition transformer operating about 14.5 kilovolts. This is the limit switch. This is the thermostat from which the electric heater is heated up the fuel going to the boiler. These are the two pressure switch to monitor the fuel inlet pressure and we have also the chamber here from which the water level sensor electrodes are sensing the high water the low water and the low low water level alarm and cut off the fuel flowing from the main burner by the energizing the solid valve and stop the boiler from operating and this is the entire control panel of my boiler and here we have also the pressure transmitter the pressure gauge and the pressure switch of the boiler as you will find here the step pressure become less than 0.5 around 0.45 This is the steam pressure now. The boiler must need to start automatically at 0.45 megapascal. This is the pressure switch from which if the pressure drops from 0.6 become 0.45, it will automatically start the boiler. And this is the pressure transmitter from which the pressure is being sent by this uh, transmitter device and send the signal on the PLC input of this uh, control panel for the boiler. This is the PLC of the boiler controller. As you will find, this is a sequencer and it has an output alarm going to the indicator light. And that alarm for the indicator lights are hidden here. The flame present, thermostat bypass, high water level, low water level, lowest water level, ignition flame fail, first round hand drip, lowest oil, emergency stop, high oil temperature, low oil temperature, low oil pressure, low steam pressure, maintenance cover open. This is the reset button and this is a uh, emergency stop button. This is a limit switch when touch. When this uh, move up, the maintenance cover alarm will be activated. This is the plotless water level sensor from which the water level of the drum is being monitored. FLS1 for the highest water level, 
FLS2 for the lowest water level and number 3 is low low water level cut off alarm. This is 24 hour monitoring the water level drum on the boiler. This is the monitor switch from which the feed water pump will be on and off and also monitors the lowest water level. MS1 used to indicate the water level on the engine room and MS2 is for feed pump on and off operation. This is a toggle switch from which you can operate the boiler in auto mode or in manual mode. If you put down, it means you operated the first drum fan in auto mode, the pilot burner in auto mode, and the fuel oil bulb in auto mode when this is down. But if you put this in up position, means you are operated the first draft pan, the pilot burner, and the fuel oil bulb in manual mode. This is the heater. It has heavy fuel oil. If you put it on up, means you are going to use the heater for heavy fuel oil. If you put down, you are using diesel oil without heater. And this is thermostat bypass. Normally, it is put on low position. This is the pressure gauge. As you will find, there is a pipe going to the two pressure switch. This pressure switch, one is for low fuel oil inlet pressure. And this is the low, low fuel oil inlet pressure from which the boiler will give a signal to the current valve to cut the fuel and stop the boiler from the operation. And this is the high temperature fuel inlet alarm monitor. Hello guys, hey to you. What I have here is the presentation arranged on a word presentation for my vertical composite boiler type OPS2-130 slash 100 the maker of my boiler is Osaka boiler manufacturing LTD and volcano periodical check and alarm testing and operational check must be done to all electrical and electronic instrument devices of all equipment on board so that you are able to maintain the operation and the safety of your equipment. Being electrician on board or ETO, electrical engineer on board, we are responsible to do a weekly check, a monthly check, a third periodic test for the alarms and trips of all other equipments. 
On board ship, we have plenty of auxiliary equipments involving inside of the engine machineries such as boiler, the incinerators, the generators, the oily water separators, the bills alarm, the fire detection systems. One of the equipment that I'm doing a testing is a boiler. In boiler, we are as always to do uh, what you call steam pressure alarm test. In the steam pressure alarm test, you can test it with a low or high pressure test. In a pressure steam test, the instrument involved here is the pressure transmitter. This is a pressure transmitter. The pressure gauges and the pressure switches as you see from here I just uh, put here the pressure gauge and the pressure switch this is the pressure gauge and this is the pressure switch the pressure gauge sends the steam pressure then it displays the actual pressure of your steam and the pressure switch monitors the steam pressure up to 0 0.65 2.7 megapascal or 7 bars once the steam pressure here rises by 0 0.65 to 0 0.7 the contact switch here will be open and it will de-energize the solenoid valve on the fuel inlet and it will stop the boiler from running down here you will find the what you call the pressure transmitter the steam pressure indication as what you have seen on the engine control room take note during a boiler is running the steam pressure increases from 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 2.7 pressure steam generate display here that is the equivalent of the p2i meaning pressure to current signal converter from this instrument that is a pressure transmitter then when the pressure here rise by 0.7 the boiler will automatically stop from operation with the help of the pressure switch and that pressure switch command the solid valve located on the fuel oil supply to cut off the fuel supply and stop the boiler once you do the alarm test inside of the engine control room you will see the boiler steam low low or the steam getting higher inside of the engine room the alarm is being generated also in the boiler control panel there is a display there and has a indicator lights when the steam getting higher or the steam getting lower it displays on the indicator lights as you have seen on the boiler control panel also one of the thing you must need to perform is the emergency trip alarm test normally boiler has two emergency stop switch button one is located on inside of the engine control room and one is located on the 
control panel. This is a control panel. The cover of this control panel have emergency stop. Once you push it, it will automatically stop the boiler during emergency. Also, inside of the control room, there is emergency stop button. When the boiler is running and there is something happen and needs some emergency to stop the boiler from operation, you can press this and then the boiler will stop automatically. Also, one of the emergency tests you must need to do is the low pressure alarm test for the fuel in a fuel system of the boiler there is a what you call pressure gauges and that pressure gauge told somewhere here and then there is a pressure switch one is for the low fuel inlet pressure alarm and the other one is the low low pressure inlet cut off meaning when in order for you to test a low pressure a low pressure alarm test let the boiler run then you must need to close the throttling valve here you must going to the pressure gauge and then once you close it you must need to open the bleeder here if you bleed the fuel here this pressure switch senses a low pressure and the alarm on the boiler panel is eliminated if you do so continuously a low low pressure trip alarm will happen because inside of the pressure gauge nearby there is two pressure transmitter connected on it and that is pressure switch responsible when the pressure drops by 0 0.95 megapascal the boiler stop from operation and alarm will sound take note my boiler working pressure for the fuel inlet is 1.0 bar or up normally one bar up to two bar one bar sometimes 1.8 1.9 like this if the pressure on the fuel temperature the fuel temperature of my boiler normally it has a 150 degrees celsius it depends on the viscosity level of the fuel you are using on the boiler. Sometimes on other ships I've encountered we are using only 150, 130, 120, 110. Sometimes they are using 95 degrees Celsius. But here on my ship we are using 120 degrees Celsius and on manufacturers they said we need to put the pressure temp the thermostat setting by 150 but our ship we are using a good fuel oil so that from 150 we make it by 120 degrees celsius take note that the boiler has electric heaters And by adjusting the thermostat, you can regulate or control the steam by the electric heater. Also, on the boiler heater, we have two thermostats. One is controlling for the high alarm temperature and one is used to monitor the low temperature alarm normally the low temperature of my fuel oil we are using on our boiler is 105 degrees celsius 
to do a test for high temperature alarm we only rotate from 150 we need to decrease it by 105 if we decrease the thermostat by 105 degrees Celsius you can generate a high alarm on the fuel inlet on the other side we have also a thermostat when you rotate the thermostat by from 105 you increase the setting by 150 you can get a low alarm on fuel inlet also the very important here is the drum water level high alarm test normally the boiler has a two feed pump feed pump water pump one and feed pump number two this feed pump is installed somewhere in a casking tank and that feed pump is normally is put in automatic mode because it is very important that the boiler no longer be empty with water on a drum so that from there we are installing a what you call a floatless water levels sensor which is communicated on our water level electrode the water level electrode is installed on a chamber here and this uh, FLS floatless level sensor is communicated this one communicate with this one and the other one communicated with this one from here there is a what you call the conductivity principle from which the level of water once which the electrode reference to the electrode 1, electrode 2, electrode 3 this electrode 1, 2 and 3 is connected on the FLS 1, 2 and 3 one for the highest water level two is the low water level and three is the low low water level in order for you to test a water level high alarm test what you need to do is go to the engine room you must need to put the switch from auto mode into a manual mode and once you do it just fill the boiler by speed pushing the push button here the pit pump will continue to run and then when the water level of the drum gets on the higher level There is a 13.2 milliampere signal. Then that 13.2 milliampere signal will tell and dictates the PLC system that the drum level of my boiler is already in higher level. Then the alarm high water level comes in. Also, we have the what you call the P2I, water level transducer, means we have DPT. This DPT is differential pressure transmitted. Generated equivalent pressure within 13.2 milliampere value and indicated the water level on the engine control room. Take note, on top of the boiler, I have here the what you call condenser. This condenser have two pipes leading to my differential pressure transmitter here and this differential transmitter here has a cable wire directed on my 4 to 20 milliampere converter module and that 4 to 20 converter module gives 
equivalent signal on this level indicator on the engine room. One gives the level indicator on the engine room and the other module is the one responsible to start and stop the feed pump of my boiler. Drum water level low alarm test. In order for you to do this, you need to do same thing. Go to the engine room. And then, from auto mode, you must need to proceed with a manual. That is a feed pump starter. And then, <coughs> you must need to open the valve somewhere on the boiler side. This is the valve. Once you open this, the water level drops up to low low level alarm. If you go to the low low level alarm, meaning your differential pressure transmitter generated only 5.2 milliampere. If you put it in manual mode, even the differential pressure transmitter here generates a signal 5.2 milliampere sending a signal on this electronic module the pit pump will no longer operate so in order for you to fill water you must need to put again the starter panel of pit pump from manual you must need to put again in automatic take note the one which is responsible to indicate the water level here on the engine room is the electronic 4 to 20 milliampere converter and other electronic 420 milliampere converter is responsible to start and stop the feed pump boiler the feed pump on the cascade tank to fill water on the drum from the cascade tank and also the most important thing here is the boiler feed pump automatic operational testing in order for you to, to test on automatic operation of the pit pump you must need to monitor this electronic 4 to 20 milliampere module converter the water level is monitored by means of the condenser here and then there is two pipe going here on the pressure transmitter differential pressure transmitter the signal from here will be feed on this electronic module this dictates the feed pump to operate and stop and this gives signal to this drum level indicator on the engine room that's it i'm going to show you further on the boiler side what are those instruments and how they are installed in thank you